Hello, hello, and welcome back to Geek Retreat with the YYT Boys. This is Steve Dolman here, and I'm joined by Andrew Campbell across from me. Now, the two, the, the two of us and two of our other dear comrades are going to be taking over to Germany and uh, annexing the, the, the land for UK by sheer dominance in the first of the Crystal Cups. This is something I'm thinking about taking to the Crystal Cup. Uh, not really set yet. I mean, it's, it's very hard to turn down Earth Wind, but it feels like uh, this could be a good last hurrah for Opus 7 as well. And of course, unless you've been living under a rock and you've not really been looking at much Final Fantasy TCG lately, this is spoiler season. There's a lot of really cool stuff, and dare I say it, if you keep your eyes on our channel, you're going to see a very cool YYT exclusive spoiler very soon. Uh, Andrew, what's your favourite spoiler so far? That is a tough one. Um, I think it's a toss-up between either the new Alexander card, the four cost. A Alexander is incredibly flexible, yeah. D destroying any character of cost four or more. I think that as a CP sync to hammer one of your opponent's backups, like there's a lot of backups you invest in up front from the new Luna Freya, more on that in a moment, to devout some star symbols and things like that, that generate some value as they go on. And I, I think that the, the gap between getting a resolution out of these and what you have to sink into putting these onto the field is quite wide and Alexander looks very well positioned to capitalise on that gap while not being as dead as Hecaton here in the matchups where they're playing a lot more two cost backups. I think my favourite thing is okay you could argue Keel Falker does a better job when they're an empty hand or you've been using the Danes appropriately. I, I, I think the problem is you know, that Chaos Walker is more of a kind of an engine piece. Unless you can be quite sure through Discard or, 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 or Zidane or, or things like Yuna Hero, it's quite difficult to know for sure that Chaos Walker is going to be mm. safe and so it's a bad idea to do it just blindly up front. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that it definitely has a niche as a super flexible card and the game needs more flexible cards. Yes. Yeah, speaking of flexible cards, I'm going to show you some flexible discards. Would you like odds or evens? I'll take odds. Odds it is. And would you like to cut? Um, I think I shall take... I'll take second. Second? That's bold. Any particular strategy behind this, or will I see that in time? Oh, hopefully having Ander. I'll mulligan that. It was an okay hand, but it was kind of missing a certain something. Woo, that is a... Hmm. Tough call? It is indeed a tough call. I think... This is not spectacular, but I'll see what I can do. Let's go for Spooky Stick. Spooky Stick. Sounds good. We're going to pitch an Earth Plan. And probably a Genesis and a Sid Reigns for the great redeemer of Minfilia. Take back Genesis, Sid Reigns, and pass. Okay. I would have liked something that revealed a little bit less of what's going on in my hand, but I don't think information advantage matters too much when it's so unlikely that all the cards in your opening hand are going to stick. Yes. Chances are Genesis is maybe going to get chucked next turn anyway. And if you're playing what I think you're playing, then said Reigns is also going to get chucked pretty soon. I'm going to pitch a Diabolo from Azura for the Dane and Pass. Oh my goodness. I see what you mean about this being a risky stick. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some remarkable things with the few forwards that are in my hand. Okay, so said Reigns is markedly useless. We'll get down a Duke Lark. And I think just for the the sheer constraint you've put upon me, we're going to have to drop. Hmm. This is difficult. This is very difficult. Gremlin and Glazia for Genesis, who's on plus 1000. Okay. And I'll pass there. Okay. We'll pitch a Miggle for Conbury, so let's just Genesis power by 2000. Consider me shrunk. I'll stick a little 2 down here. And we'll swing with the day. No hits. But I'll take the damage. And there's another Glazia, right. I knew there was a reason I didn't want to discard Glazia, because now that Zidane is immortal. And we will pass it up. Okay, giving yourself some options for what you can discard to Genesis, or maybe I'm going to get ambushed in a horrible way. 
I'll go to combat. Okay. And attack on Genesis. We're going to pitch a demo for the Zura, so we're going to activate the <laughs> Sedane. <laughs> what on earth card. is this? We're going to pitch Tonberry's player block the Sedane. Sorry, 2000s. Two th yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I guess I've technically kind of shrunk some of the field. I don't know. I'm trying to console myself here. Hmm. and Cecil to overpay for Jill in the Bat. Okay. Now I could have played Jill in the Bat normally, but if I keep Cecil in hand, then Zidane is going to get activated. Yes. And I really want to be able to blast you if, if I unfortunately draw the next one really soon. Yeah, pass there. And you, and you know one card in hand. Going to pitch a middle for summoner, and we're going to swing the deck. I Kuja. get to see as oh empty hand. Um, Minus plan. Who's blending in very nicely <laughs> on this mat that I hastily add is borrowed. There's no way I would I would willingly use this mat. And no 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 offense to you, you Yu-Gi-Oh cretins out there. <laughs> It's all going too well into it. Let's drop a flan on an Orgath. See what you've got to discard. And then let's go three on Sarah for the same. Oh my word. Right. I'll pass there. Pitch a brother. Tap one for the brother. The other brother. My other brother. Feels a lot like an, an evoker when you reach the stage where you're losing a card to gain a card. It's not too bad. Backups are what keeps you out of reach of this crippling discard. We shall pass on You don't really fancy trading Zidane in Corsera. If indeed I would take that bait, so yeah, that makes some sense. <laughs> Not quite yet. In that case, I'll go to combat an Isle attack for the thousands. The thousands. Hit somebody off. Mariah. Mariah Kenny. She's scary. Hmm. Allegedly backups are nice. I'm going to play Harley to invest in my future, and I'll pass there. I can't really bluff having Matthias especially well. I mean, I totally could, but kind of goes a little bit against this deck's ethic. Tap two. Pitch a bit more. Or Shinra. Sculpting a hand is mega gold wings. Search for the Yuna and pass. pass. No attacking on Zidane. Um, you could. There's one unknown card in hand. I'll, I'll give you that opportunity just to remind you no, that. No, I that shall take it. Hmm. I would love to see some major discard this turn since I know I'm going to get a good hit. But no, what Steve wants, Steve doesn't get. I am relatively confident that you would not want to discard much from hand for a summon. Like, I don't think I'm going to get Bismarck from the backswing because you're not going to want to cripple your hand too much. I know there's a Riku, I know there's a Yuna, I don't think you'd want to lose either for a summon, so I'm reasonably content just attacking with Sarah. She'll take that. It is a Levi's. But not of the EX first variety. I don't think I'd want to return any of your cards anyway. Probably not. Probably not. Hmm. I think I'll just pass there. I'm saving up for when eventually I see Sephiroth for a really big win condition or just anything to be honest. What I'd give for Midfilia to be a Sid Wolf right now. For your store. Very good. Stops all sorts of things. And we'll swing with the day. Let me see that hand. I lose Sid Alstein. There's two two cost backups there. 
whether it's worth just playing said all time because he's big, I will decide by the time I see the next copy. It will pass tough. What do we have this time? Oh, uh, <laughs> go to combat again. Okay. And tap on Sarah. Hit the one. I know that I Hmm. <laughs> could do a few things here. There's a few slightly evocative things I could play, but I know you're you're worryingly close to reaching critical mass. Playing Ustola before you play any of the Gullwings is the smart thing, just so that nothing happens when priority is passed as you drop Yuna. And so it's very likely you're going to get a really big board here. I, I would love to be able to just play more things, but we'll see if I get that far. I don't actually think Edward will make tons of difference here. Maybe, maybe some indication would be something, but no. I'll pass it. Right. We will tap two. Pitching a metal whip and a whacker. For you know, do you have any responses? I do not. We'll drop a pain. Sure. We shall tap one. Pitch a Riku for Riku. Looks good. No. This is all the forwards I'm running. <laughs> Every forward in the deck. Somehow we got there from a turn once a day. Uh, we'll enter combat and swing the Dane. John the Bat, Emperor, Mog, Sarah. We shall activate a brother. Swing with you. Yes, that's it. Okay. Half time. I think it's really just about over here. There's no useful discard has come early. You've got the one backup up just for any summon related abilities. Let's see how many summons you've got in the break zone for Yuna's ability. I believe I have eight. That's not a summon, that's a turn break. <laughs> Enough for a couple of activations anyway, which makes me a little bit concerned. Kind of have to do something big this turn though or I'll, or I'll fall apart in horrible ways. Mog and the Emperor and three for Sephiroth. I hate playing Sephiroth mm. for no discard, but I'm going to get absolutely steamrollered if I don't and I'll lose him to Zidane. Mm. And Jill the Bat for Squall. Okay. Squall is currently on 9k first strike. I think it makes sense for me to go for the 9k. One activation off Yuna wouldn't be quite enough. I'll pass there. Sephiroth also being on 9k. I'm just I'm just moving the one counter. Oh wait, the, the, there are technically two counters. Uh, I'll move them between the things that I have. So once this deck plays its very resistant forwards, really you just wait and accumulate summons in hand and constantly combat trick to keep your board state. You want combat to always go in your favour, simply do not block and do not let yourself get blocked if you think there is a problem or, or any kind of other risk. I've had to go pretty empty on hand for any chance of staying alive here, which also is a good one. It's what happens when Sephiroth shows up a little bit too late, or the double discard turns. For, for a little bit too long I was I was drawing backups and the pressure of Zidane and me not having Glacia has really had a knock-on effect. For Leviathan, let's return Sephiroth to hand. But of course. Entering combat. Uh, we'll swing to Dane. <laughs> uh, do you want to put the uh, counter on Sarah? Yeah, why not? Why not? I'll go to five. Yeah. We shall swing with Yuna for eight. Oh wait, I should have activated one for... I'm going to have to break Yuna. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm going to have to not break Yuna. 
Yeah, there's no point continuing this. <laughs> yeah, the, like, unless you win quickly and disrupt quickly, which is the important part in this particular matchup, you basically can't win with a lot of the meta decks against this kind of a Gullwings. Ice is already a little bit strapped for meaningful removal. Uh, it's why I said Allstein is so good, is it, it gives Ice a body bigger than they normally get and removal that they don't normally have access to. But my goodness, does a, a lack of discard and astonishingly a double discard, double body just happen way too late. Way too little, way too late wins. Uh, it's kind of funny, but Zidane did a lot of legwork in making me empty my hand. And he has to get contested. And I was two glaciers down at the end of like turn two. Um, yeah, I think it's it, it's a prophecy that writes itself. Yes, I think uh, another thing that really helped swing that game was the Tonberries. The the all in Tonberries play was quite incredible, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And I I have to be aggressive because I have to cut you off, and every discard matters. And it certainly looks like as I empty your hand with Genesis, even even you spending so many cards to remove Genesis. Genesis kind of did his job, but at the same time, it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't. It wasn't the right kind of hand emptying. It, you, yes. At no point were you really threatened, and at no point was there any risk of Zidane dying yeah. because the two Glazias were gone, and the third one I've shuffled now. But yeah, yeah, you, 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 your removal really matters, yes. especially when you played that so early. I think I should probably have probably have discarded the plan to keep the the Glazia. Yeah. It, it was a tough one. Um, it's tough when you draw. Tough when you draw bad cards. I guess I should put better cards in, and then I'll draw better cards. Cheers for watching.